It is the start of week four and this train ain't slowing down. Legs and shoulders today. It's gonna suck. It's gonna suck. That's okay. Get over it, get used to it. Let's make it happen. Here we go. Boop. You are now in the presence of a king. Well, oh, my legs are tired. Yep, I'm gonna be feeling that tomorrow. So today was a good workout. Uh, as always, started off with a nice warm up. Today, take a little extra time on getting your legs loose because we are gonna do uh, some good leg work today and also your shoulders. I like to throw in, on days I do shoulders, I like to get my rotator cuff muscles loose by doing that external rotation with the with the bands and um yeah just make sure you get good and loose today after the warm-up go straight into squats i like to do a warm-up set and then follow that up with three sets of ten after squats went right into the overhead press three sets of ten and after the overhead press i kind of set up a circuit and I'm using a kettlebell, but you can use a dumbbell if you want to. But it's kettlebell front squats, 10 of them, immediately followed by kettlebell lunges, 10 of them, immediately followed by 180 degree squat jumps, 10 of them, one minute rest. Do that cycle three times, and uh, yeah. I hope you don't look as terrible as I did. After that little circuit, we did some shoulder work, went right into seated front raises, three sets of 10, and then side raises, three sets of 10, and finally finished it off with some upright rows, three sets of 10. Solid workout today. You know, we're at the point now, you know, we're at the end of the warm up month. Make sure when we're doing sets of 10 today, for example, find a weight where when you get to that 10th rep, you're pretty much a failure. As a matter of fact, if you fail on the ninth rep, I'd say you're, you're right on spot with the weight you should be at. You know, if you feel like you can get 12 or 13 of that weight, you might want to bump up the weight a little bit. And anyways, so we're, we're at that point where we, we want to be pushing it now. Other than that, have a great workout. It's a good one. I will see you tomorrow. We're going for a run on the trail. Take her easy. I'm out.
today I'm gonna to do front raises a little bit different I'm gonna set my bench on an incline kind of like I was doing an incline uh, bench press except <clears throat> I'm gonna take the weights and I'm a little hang down to the side here and <clears throat> when I do the front raises I'm basically just gonna come up like I normally would nice and slow on the way down have a good long negative like maybe a three to one And I'm gonna knock out three sets of 10. Get some.
<laughs> What's going on everybody? Welcome. Today I want to talk to you about supplements. I'm going to kind of break this into multiple different parts. I'm going to start off with talking about supplements that are more geared for training, for uh, athleticism, and then towards the end I'll talk about supplements that are more geared for just overall health and general wellness. But first, I do want to kind of throw a little disclaimer out there. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a physical therapist. I'm not a doctor. Although I did play a doctor in third world countries, I do have some significant medical training. I've worked in the civilian field and in the military side of things. I've got a wide array of procedures under my belt. I've amputated a leg. I have put patients under general anesthesia. I have delivered babies. <laughs> I know, like I was even the catcher. For, for a couple of them. And then the others I did like some assistance with uh, C-sections. But I'm only kind of telling you that just one, I just want you to get to know me a little bit more. And two, hopefully it'll give a little bit more clout to some of the things that I say. But at the same, in the same breath, I want you to understand, you gotta do your own research. Don't just listen to me, all right? I'm just a guy on the internet. I want you to make sure that you're getting multiple sources. Find the people who really support something and see why they support it, why they recommend it. And then look at the other end of the spectrum. Look at the people who are saying, hey, don't take this. Uh, they don't support it and why? And at the end of the day, you'll have a much more well-rounded education and you'll be more confident in the decisions that you make. Because let's be honest, you only got one body, all right? We don't want to ruin it. We want to take care of it. So, all right, with that little disclaimer out of the way, let's kind of get into it. The first supplement I want to talk about is probably the most purchased supplement on the planet, and that is protein. Protein, as most of you know, we get most of it through our meats like beef, steak, uh, chicken, fish. Uh, we also get it in nuts and beans, and those are kind of like the main sources of protein. And I will say, when you're trying to reach your protein uh, intake goals for the day, we want to get the majority of that through our diet, but it's really difficult to do a lot of times, especially when you're working out hard, you want to get a little bit more protein in. So it's nice to supplement it with, in my opinion, a whey protein. I choose a whey protein because it's very fast absorbing. You can take it right after a workout when your body needs it the most. Protein is just an essential part of just your body's needs. It has to do with you know, soft tissue reproduction, muscle, building muscle. Uh, it's great for your metabolism, helps you lose weight. There's, it's needed in every organ in your body. It's just something that we really need, but especially when we start working out more intensely. And unfortunately, I think there's a lot of people, especially elderly people, who are not getting enough protein. And it can have some really bad side effects if you really are deficient in protein. Most of us are getting enough where we probably don't notice too much, but if you have an irregularities in your nails and your skin and your hair, it could be because you're not getting enough protein. And if you're not getting enough protein when you're working out hard, you could actually lose muscle and you can take a few steps backwards. The good thing about protein is it's really hard to overdose on it. I'm not saying that you can't take too much protein. You can take too much of anything at the end of the day, but it's really difficult to do with protein. So I'd rather shoot for a higher goal than not meet my needs, okay? How much protein should you take? And that could be controversial depending on who you're listening to on the internet or what research that you're looking at. You can see people talk about anywhere from 0.4 grams of protein per pound body weight per day all the way up to two grams of protein, which is freaking a lot. And that's one, it's really difficult to do and, and uh, I don't know. It's probably overkill. The people who are probably trying to get two grams of protein a day, they, it's a good chance they're probably on some sort of steroids or something where they're really building a lot of muscle and they really need to get that protein in in order to achieve the you know, maximum standard there or you know, optimal fitness. I guess maximize on their pro, uh, steroid intake. I don't know is what I'm trying to say. But generally, we don't need that much. I like to keep it simple. And I think a really good goal that is probably perfect is one gram of protein per pound body weight per day. 
Now, when I say that, I don't mean what your weight is currently, you know, especially let's just, for example, say you're 250 pounds and your goal weight is 200 pounds. Your goal weight is what you should do when you're doing that calculation. Okay, so keep that in mind. And the protein that I like to use is whey protein. I like whey protein because it's a fast absorbing protein. Uh, there's different types of whey. You got whey isolate, you got whey concentrate, and you got whey hydrosylate. And for all intensive purposes, what you need it for, any one of those are gonna work out for you fine. So try not to get too much into the weeds about the protein. I will say this though, when you're looking at choosing a protein, I want you to consider a few things. Look at the back of the label, and if it says proprietary blend for, you know, when it's just explaining what the protein is, I would probably stay away from that. It's probably crap. Now, if it says blend, like a blend of protein, or excuse me, whey isolate and whey hydrosylate, then that's totally fine. Not a big deal. And the next thing I would say to consider is when you're looking at the back of that label is, is kind of twofold. One, I wanna make sure that it has about 25 grams of protein or more per serving. And at the same time, I'd like it to be under 150 calories per serving, okay? We don't want any unwanted calories. Most of us are trying to lose weight. So you're gonna see that some proteins, yeah, they can be like 210, 220. There's a good chance that those proteins are, you know, the companies are adding a lot of sugar into it and they just want, want it to taste better and to get you to keep coming back and buying it. Please try to hone it down. Now, if you're a skinny mini and you're trying to put on weight, then maybe it doesn't really matter for you. But for the majority of the people out there, we're trying to lose weight. So let's try to cut down on the calories. So there you have it, protein. I think it's pretty important and I would recommend protein for everyone, the elderly population, like 60 and older, uh, studies are showing that most of those people are not getting enough protein. And protein is very vital for, you know, everything in your body. Basically, it's the building blocks of your cells. You know, if you got an open wound, a cut, your body's going to try to rebuild the tissue around there. And it, guess what it needs? It needs protein. Okay. So it's, it's just important for all aspects of the body. And uh, yeah. Okay. Enough about protein. Next thing I want to talk about, it's starting to get dark here. The next thing I wanna talk about is electrolytes. Electrolytes were something that I introduced into my uh, regiment, like maybe like week five or six. I was struggling for a little bit, trying to stay hydrated. I mean, I was drinking more water, but you know, I was doing this workout program in Florida in the middle of the summer in my hot garage, and I even try to run early in the morning, like 7.30 in the morning, seven in the morning, and it would already be above 80 degrees. And so I'm already sweating before I even start working out. And if you're like me and you sweat a lot, I would highly recommend adding electrolytes into your routine, your daily routine. And I was taking it, you know, just one or two servings the night before, you know, before I went to bed, basically. And when I started doing that, totally changed my workouts. So what are electrolytes? Really, it's just, mostly it's just salt, but it's sodium, potassium, calcium, uh, magnesium. Those are kind of like the main ingredients. And you, if you look on the back of the label, you might see a bunch of other stuff, B vitamins and things like that, and that's totally cool. But just like with protein, we want to cut down on the sugar. And there's some really good electrolytes that have zero sugar that taste well. So just stay with the zero sugar stuff and I think you're gonna be fine. Uh, yeah, so electrolytes, that was, that was a big one for me, a total game changer. Highly recommended, especially if you're working out in hot temperatures or if you sweat a lot like I do. If you have the salt rings when you're done working out and your shirt t-shirt dries and you have like the white salt rings, you're probably a candidate for, for electrolytes. And it's not necessarily that you need to take the electrolyte supplements, you can actually provide a lot of, uh, of the benefit by just adding table salt to your food. So adding a little bit more salt to your food is, is quite all right. It's a good way to help with hydration. I would kind of try to stay away from the iodized salt. Use that uh, pink Himalayan salt. I think that's probably the better option, but at the end of the day, it's okay if you use the regular table salt. 
if you start getting that feeling of, uh, if you're thirsty throughout the day, you're, you're already dehydrated if you're feeling a thirst. But there's nothing worse than when you're like halfway through a run, three quarters of the way through a run, and your mouth is dry, so dry that you can't swallow. One, that's miserable. Two, um, it's a precursor to heat exhaustion. And that's a precursor to heat stroke, which is a medical emergency. We want to avoid that. All right, so make sure that you're staying hydrated. Electrolytes are a good way to go. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about is one of my favorite supplements right now. Like I'm, I'm really surprised I wasn't taking this. I wasn't taking this like for the majority of my life, but creatine monohydrate. This supplement, and if you start reading the studies, like it just, it's something you should probably try. Uh, and I would recommend this one. I feel comfortable recommending this one to younger people, middle-aged people, and, and elderly people. Even elderly people who aren't working out hard can benefit from creatine. So creatine's benefits are, one, that you help you build muscle. It's going to be really good for those high-intensity interval training events. And if you're going to do heavy lifts like, you know, maybe you're trying to max out or whatever, creatine will actually help you out with that. It's not magic or anything. It's not anything like steroids but it's definitely got some major benefits and, and most people will see that. Another thing that will happen when you take creatine is, well, this may be a negative, I don't know, may, maybe not, but you will gain some weight, especially if you're gonna take creatine and do the loading phase. What happens is your, your muscles will start absorbing and pulling in more water into them, which is, it's not bad weight, guys. So when you see the scale go up a few pounds, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, because it is just water weight and it's actually filling your muscles up. You look a little bit bigger and it's going to help you with your training. So at the end of the day, don't worry about a little bit of weight gain. Some other negatives that you might have heard about, um, really it's got a bad reputation for a few things. One thing, I think it may have started, you know, back in the steroid era of baseball when Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, Jose Canseco, Barry Bonds, they were all hitting these huge home runs. And you know, they were all on steroids. And one of the things that they were saying is that they were taking creatine. Because people would ask them, hey, what are you taking? We wanna, you know, what's your workout? What are you taking? And pretty much all of them were saying they were taking creatine. So I think creatine got kind of a bad rap because of that and kind of put in this category of steroids and it's nothing like that. Okay, so that kind of was, you know, like 20 years ago, it kind of got put in that and then I remember going through the special forces qualification course. They told us to stay away from creatine because it could cause dehydration. But there are studies that are coming out that basically are kind of saying, no, nah, that's not really the case. So I wouldn't worry about that either if that's something that you heard. Another thing that was going on is that um, there was this talk about it could cause kidney damage. And so when you do take creatine, it will break down in your body and in your urine, you're gonna have more creatinine. And that's just going to happen when you take creatine. And studies are showing that it's really nothing to worry about. Because when a doctor sees that, they're going to immediately think, ah, oh, there's some kidney issues going on. But I've actually listened to some other doctors who say they don't even look at that, you know, result anymore because of what happens when you take creatine. It just, it just happens. And it's not anything that is of any concern. It doesn't appear. Uh, all the studies now are pretty much saying that creatine is very, very safe. So I feel very comfortable uh, recommending that. Again, always do your own research, you know, make sure that you feel comfortable in anything that you're taking. And if you don't know what you're taking, man, you should, probably shouldn't take it before you do some research. Okay. Um, yeah, so those are the three things I just wanted to talk about today. Protein, electrolytes, and creatine. And those three supplements I feel really confident in recommending, especially if you're gonna be working out with me doing this workout program, because it's gonna be a little bit intense and we're gonna need those things. The next segment, I'm gonna talk about something a little bit more taboo, maybe a little bit more unknown. And to be honest with you, there's not a lot of human cl clinical trials, so I don't feel comfortable saying, hey, you should take this. But um, nonetheless, I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna tell you what my results were and you know, we'll just talk a little bit more about it in the next section. Yeah, I'm going to end that here, and it's getting kind of dark. Hopefully, you can still see me. That's all I got for you today. You guys, take her easy, stay strong, stay in a fight, and I will see you on the next one.